So we're here in Jeff Hamilton's studio. Beautiful. One day, maybe I'll bribe you to, you know, get a 2K TV jacket for me. And every season, we make a new one. <laughs> I like the sound of that. He said it. Jeff Hamilton. Go get his stuff in 2K24 right now. Welcome to an all-new episode of NBA 2K TV. My co-host Alexis is in the beautiful city of Indy for All-Star Weekend. So here in the studio, we're bringing all of you an all-star studded episode. First up, okay, maybe we're not all-stars, but last week, Team 2K TV started another season of My NBA Eras, and it's been fire. Let's take a look. And we're back for another season of My NBA Eras. Last season, Blake took that title, and then we went into the draft. I only had a 6% chance of getting the number one pick, but guess who got that pick? It was Alexis Morgan here with the Boston Celtics. And you know who I chose? Giannis Antetokounmpo. Man, my team was stacked. I had KD, Giannis, Pau, so many other great players. And then over in the West, Chris lost Kobe Bryant in free agency to the Spurs. Chris, how did it feel to lose number 24? So I lost Kobe to the Spurs, which means a full retooling of the Lakers. Well, it looks like the Lakers did pretty good for you after we simmed the regular season. Now we are in the playoffs and we all made it. So congratulations to all of you. And for the chance to take on Brian in the Western Conference Finals, we've got a matchup between Chris and Danny. Right now, it's the Lakers versus the Kings. It's going to be a classic matchup, and we're going to get started right now. Let's go. Let's see who faces Brian. Let's do it. Let's do this. Good luck, Chris. Bad luck, Danny. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, to Team 1. All right, I'm a little worried about this matchup because Danny is really good in this My League. He has two formidable bigs down low and the MVP, Derrick Rose. Danny, you worried about anything going up against Chris? I mean, just the stick skills of LD2K. Uh, he can overcome any any adversity, so we'll see what happens here in this game. Hey, who said it was okay for Dang to wear number eight? <laughs> Chris, did you put Dang in number eight? <laughs> yeah, what's going on there? You should have changed his number before the game. It looks wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Kick out to Dang. Oh, or the three. Oh, okay. Ooh, that was nice. Ooh. On every possession. This time. I'm going into quiet mode now. I'm just going to focus on this old <laughs> game fight here. There's enough commentary here. Here's Gilmore. Here's Harper. Good for the big. Who's 96? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> who's, big, who's Big Red? <laughs> who's. who's I wonder the same thing, Brian. <laughs> Chris is taking every shot with Dang. I think that number eight is still making him think he has Kobe. Yeah, it's throwing him off a little bit. <laughs> Jordan. Ooh. Ooh. That Rose is so fast. Very effective down on that low block. That's going to be all game. Um, Big Red can't hang with that. I'm sticking to one strategy and I'm going long on it. I wonder what will be Danny's offense once Rose sits down. Win? <laughs> I learned a lesson from Brian last year, which is that, you know, I love to keep players fresh, but it's more important to keep great players on the floor. That's an old CT Hezzy shout out, too. That was always mm -hmm. his strategy yeah. in Play Now Online from 2KTP, his appearance. Hey, it's the Tom Thibodeau way. You just run your players into the ground, run them heavy <laughs> minutes, and see what you can do. Wow. Come on now. Getting the whistle. Ooh. The whistle always blows for the Lakers. <laughs> Especially in this matchup. <laughs> Especially against the Kings. Hey, Danny. If you need some more tissues, I got you. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might need them. Here's Aldridge. Oh, nice play, oh. Danny, I like what you did with Ben Wallace. You matched his age with his jersey number. <laughs> <laughs> Good quarter. Good quarter. Good quarter. Four point lead for my Lakers. I'm feeling uh, decent about that, to be honest. No other way to put it. Just a poor shooting performance. Let's go. It's a good game. It is good. Yeah. You overcame that four point deficit, Danny. <laughs> Against all odds, including the refs. Yep, that one goes. This is a this is a good one. You can never give Chris any team and he's got a chance to play. 
Except with Team 2K TV. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I, I admire that Chris is sticking with Aaron Brooks on Derek Bros. I mean, that is something that I would have <laughs> right? given up on immediately. I got oh, back for that. Block. I pulled him You're back. You're so big oh down low, gosh. I can't do anything. Here's Rose. Yeah, time out. And the dunk by Rhodes. Here's Brooks. What a Euro. Wow, Aaron Brooks. Oh, no. What a, that is a bad turnover. Here's Brewer. Oh, man. That was terrible. Danny goes into halftime with a two point lead. A little defensive breakdown by Chris at uh, the end of that second quarter. Nice move. Hi, game. Okay. There you go. Uh, quarter three. Good shot. Oh, his first attempt is in. This does look like a classic Kings Lakers matchup. It really does. Which means it's going to come down to a role player hitting a big shot. Or come down to a ref. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Chris, maybe you should run the triangle offense. Six on the shot clock. Who's that? Who is that? Wow, what a shot. <laughs> what was that release? <laughs> what was that? Outside Covington. Here's Aldrin. Mm. One point game going into the fourth. Chris, you're doing great. Good, good game, Danny. Good game. Pass to Bull. Oh. I want to play the right way. I like that Danny's having to remind himself. I, I want to play the right way. I want to play the right way. <laughs> oh, wow. It rolled in. That was beautiful. Hey, what do you expect when number eight takes the floor for the Lakers? <laughs> <laughs> well, dang. Woo, let's go. Oh. All right, two minutes, Danny. Let's go. Danny, you should, like, call two timeouts and just go ham with Derrick Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Timeout called by the Kings. Your Derrick Rose energy level is something I would never let my players get to. <laughs> good foul, good foul. Are we in the penalty yet? I would have thought you were, the way the refs are calling it for Danny <laughs> and Ponder over here. I have to go five on eight just to win these My League games. This is tragic. League officials are already discussing the potential fines coming Chris's way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shannon Brown, know what he can do? Oh, good take. Yes. All right, you got one minute, Danny. Come on, couple stops. You can do this, Danny. Yeah, we believe right in there. you. <laughs> oh, good oop, Danny. Okay. There you go. Come on, one stop. No, you need a quick Oh, my Danny. goodness. Danny. It's in. You need a steal. Come on, Danny. Outside Corver. Fires for three. Oh, oh, man. Good game, Chris. Good game, Danny. Wow. So Chris takes this win, and he's going to face Brian in the Western Conference Finals. Congratulations, Danny, on getting it this far. Valiant effort from the Kings, but the Lakers take it once again. It seems like that's history repeating itself. So, Brian, Chris, are you ready to jump into this Western Conference Finals? I suppose so. I'm going to take a deep breath and realize that I just took out the MVP and the Kings. Great game played by Danny. I think if I can get through that matchup, I feel really good about Brian's matchup. But we're going to see. I'm ready to rock. I saw some things that I can uh, attack, things I have to defend. I just want to get on the sticks. But before that game, let's hear from Rodney and the East. What's going on out East? Yeah, Chris, I took on the Indiana Pacers in the second round, and I got to say, LeBron James came through, and I'm moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. And this is where we meet Rodney. It's the Celtics versus the Knicks. Unfortunately, Katie, who carried me last round, did not show up. That's unfortunate for you, but you know who showed up for him? It was Jeff Teague. 31 points to help support LeBron James and move on to the NBA Finals. A new tier of player is now available in my team. We all love the 99 overall Dark Matters, but you know what's even better? A 100 overall especially when it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's right. Kareem is now the first 100 overall card to debut in my team. With six championships, six regular season MVPs, and 19 all-star selections, this honor is well-deserved. This one-of-a-kind card can do everything on the hardwood. So if you want to make history and collect the first 100 overall player to your lineup, He's available as a special insert in NBA All-Star packs and boxes. Happy All-Star. We'll see you on the court with Kareem. 
dropping today, February 16th, and only available for a limited time, you can pick up iconic Jeff Hamilton jackets in NBA 2K24. If you aren't familiar with this legend in basketball clothing, keep watching to check out more about his career, his love for basketball, and his involvement in 2K. Take a look. Today, we're at the studios of the legendary designer, Jeff Hamilton. It is an honor. Welcome to 2K TV, Jeff. Thank you for having me. If you're a basketball fan, you've probably noticed players wearing Jeff's iconic leather jackets, but fans may not know about how you got started back in the 80s. So take us through your journey of how you got here. When I was 23, 24 years old, uh, I moved to, to America with $6,000. I didn't have an idea that I was going to be a designer. My background was math, physics. My dream was to become an accountant. But I was kind of a, I had an entrepreneur mind, you know, and right away I started just basically buying and jobbing from one store to two other stores. And then in 1983, uh, in late 82, I started negotiating uh, with guests for the first license of the men's wear line. So I became the first licensee of guest jeans and, uh, and we did the guest for men. Within two years, I had uh, 400 employees and I was doing $75 million in sales. I used to ride Harley, so I started designing some jackets just myself. And in the meantime, I became a designer by necessity because I didn't, couldn't find anybody that could do the stuff that I really wanted. I decided to, to make on my own designs. We started doing stuff for Michael Jackson and Madonna and George Michael and Andrew Dice Clay and In Living Color and Martin Lawrence and uh, I'm getting some jackets made for, 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 for Magic. Magic introduced me to Michael and, and it, everything kind of like snowballed from there, you know. So it's just, uh, so I got the license with the NBA in 1988, 89. It just took off like crazy, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, this is the actual jacket I wore in the locker room in 1997. In the 50th anniversary of the NBA. I worked Cleveland uh, Cavaliers when they won the championship. So we did one for Tristan Thompson. Obviously, there's one thing about LeBron winning with Miami. There was one thing about him winning with Cleveland, but with the Lakers, it's a different world. Somebody told me Kobe signed one of these, this right? One is, this one is signed by Kobe here. Wow, that's really amazing. What would you say came first, your love for fashion and design or your love for basketball? When did those kind of intersect for you? When I was a kid, you know, I, I, I love basketball. So for me, I, I used to see if I saw people playing basketball, I would just look at it. There was no TV. We didn't have a TV at home at the time. And when I did, I grew up in France, you know, I, I but I had a Will Chamberlain and Lou Alcindor and Jerry West poster in my room. When I came to America for the first time, I said, I, I want to buy some Lakers stuff. I said, well, you have to go to Inglewood. So I have no idea where Inglewood is. I, they were, you, I couldn't go to a store and find Laker gear. So it's kind of like the whole combination was, was a perfect storm for me to, to be able to design and, and also be creative in a way that I'm, I feel myself like an artist and using mostly the, the, the jacket as, as my canvas. It's very odd to say when you're in business to say that you don't, uh, you don't think money first. But really, for me, it's like passion comes first, and 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 my, my my love for whatever I do is first. And if the money comes, great. You know, if it does not, um, I'm still doing something I love. I only design something that I I would wear. I'm not going to design something that. If you tell me to design something, I sell 20,000 pieces and I don't like the design, I'm not doing it. Now, of course, fans right now in NBA 2K24 can go pick up your merch, your jackets, and put them on their My Players in NBA 2K24. What does that mean to you to not only introduce your brand that you've worked so hard in your career for to millions of people, but also the next generation of basketball fans that are out there watching 2K TV and playing 2K? It's just a little one more cherry on the cake that's how it is it's just uh i mean it's just an honor for me to just to be part of to be part of nba 2k i mean a kid being born in morocco raised in france coming to america with no money and 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 here i'm speaking at harvard or having my name mention a song i mean for me having my gear in nba 2k you know and and there's no there's no price for that it's just like it's going to be there for for immortality. So those are the things that for me that uh, make me feel like uh, 
potentially I would have a, a legacy. Have you had any family members or friends tell you that they put on your, your jackets in 2K, kind of hit you up about it on the side? I have a lot of friends that tell me that, you know, a lot of people, they like, a lot of fans tell me that. I love it. Well, Jeff, thank you so much thank for your you so insight. Much. And right now, go pick up Jeff's gear in NBA 2K24. I know my my players donning some of it, Jeff. It's looking good in those jackets, looking good. Scott Moak here, Sacramento Kings public address announcer, with a question for everyone. Are you ready for some top plays? I've been glued to my screen since last week. Let's check out this week's top four. Locks Tweakin has taken the first shot in the wreck, dribbling up in style, juking two defenders, and shooting right over the third. Lighting up so many badges, it looks like a segment of expert tips. Awesome combo. How about some Pro-Am action? Here's G75 TTB, swatting the ball to close the half. But wait, Rockets a shot past the reaching defender. Wow, that's possibly a four-point firework. Ending the half with a bang. Here's the truth in the wreck. Reaches up for a block, then on the other end, returns a block shot for a putback dunk. I guess when you know how to block shots, you might as well recycle them too. Sweet play. Let's finish in the theater with Dubs. Obliterates the defender's ankle on a dribble combo and then soars for the score. Don't overlook those defensive badges, my career fans. Let's go to the vote. Four good options here. Choose your top play of the week now. Do you want to be featured on 2KTV? We're looking for plays with the hashtag 2KTVWOW alongside your gamer tag. You might get on the show. This has been fun. Next week, we'll see your top assists. Until then, I'm going to head out to practice some post passes with Domantas Sabonis. Hey, there he is. Domas, wait up. Mocha's coming. Next week, we'll be looking for your top assist. So get out there and help out a teammate. Speaking of teammates, Alexis will be back here next week and we will be bringing you all the news on season number five. Until then, get out there, go elite and enjoy the game.